Welcome to another episode of the Bathtub Whopper Winemaking Project for Vintage 2016. Um, we're having a look at the uh, Shiraz again and we're just about to rack it. So last session we were talking about the process of natural clarifications through that settling and sedimentation of all the solid components that end up in the, the wine after fermentation and pressing. And this, this session, what we're actually going to do is, is go ahead and, and perform that racking or decanting process, if you want to call it that, and take all of this clear liquid away from the solid component that's sitting at the bottom of the barrels and of the tank. So to do that, we're going ghetto style once again. This is our ghetto style racking plate. In, uh, in other wineries, you have uh, amazing stainless steel fittings that uh, cost hundreds and hundreds of dollars. Here we have a, uh, a lid from a, uh, <laughs> a, a, a tub of fruit and uh, a couple of brackets and screws, uh, a few lacquer bands, and uh, it should do the trick. So what we're going to do with this is use this metal rod and hose to go in over the top of the tank, and we're going to put it in and slowly lower it down, and as we do it, we'll have the pump on, it'll be sucking out the clear wine, clear one will just gently flow over this lid and then up the hose and into our tank which is over here and it'll stop any solids being sucked up from the bottom of the tank and so as we lower it down those clear liquids will continue to be sucked up eventually we'll be able to see those solids in the bottom of the tank and we'll be able to know that we need to stop pumping and that we've got all of the clear liquid the solids are quite a different color we'll get a picture of those for you later they're quite sort of opaque um, and, and, and purple as opposed to being that sort of clear liquid of a wine. So we'll do that with a tank. And so racking of the wine decoded a bathtub of winemaking shiraz has commenced out of tank. You can see the hose on the side there. It's got that crazy green ghetto style racking plate attached to it as well. And we're just slowly sucking this liquid out and uh, transferring it into our big tank and we'll be leaving the solids in there. We've finished racking the tank. You can see here, here's my uh, crazy little racking plate thing that uh, I showed you earlier. And you can see a quite a sort of a lighter purple color in there and that's that's the lees. It's really quite thick. If I stir it, you can see just, you know, how how chunky it is compared to just standard wine. The darker color is just a really thin layer of wine that's uh, sitting on top of that lee. So we'll we'll tip that out, stick it in a bucket and resettle it, and uh, and and grab that uh, liter or so of wine that's uh, that's still in there. And uh, yeah, so we're on to racking the barrels next. We'll see you soon. Bye. Yeah, and here you can see the skanky lees that's coming out of the tank, all the solids. And you can see uh, when I pick it up, there's actually uh, quite a lot of chunks in there. I can feel little acid crystals in there from. Uh, acid falling out of the wine. So we've got a bit of what's called tartrate when uh, tartaric acid binds with potassium and falls out. And you can see it almost sparkling in there as well. So all of this is uh, going down the drain. Cheers. And then we'll do a similar thing with the barrels. We'll take this plate off and we'll just use the, uh, the middle uh, stick here and the hose and we'll just set the hose a little bit up uh, from the uh, from the bottom of the uh, of the stick, so that there's a gap to the bottom of the barrel, and all the all the solids will be left there. The hose will only suck up the uh, the clear bits, leaving all the the solids, and we'll end up with a tank full of clear wine that's a blend of these three barrels and the tank. In doing that, we'll also end up with a bit of oxygen in the wine, which will help again develop it, as we mentioned in our last session. So we're looking to take some of those raw fruit characters and progress them into more developed fruit characters that are, are, are earthy and fun and, uh, and also work on helping the mouthfeel of the wine as the oxygen encourages the tannins to combine into longer chains and, and, and make smoother mouthfeel tannins uh, for, for us to drink a bit later. So we better get to it, we'll uh, give you an update a bit later. As always if you've got any questions please leave them in the comments and uh, we'll catch you soon. Cheers from Paul at Wine Decoded. So another quick update from Wine Decoded. Here in uh, this little container here I've got some of the leaves that uh, I've been emptying out of the barrels. It's the solid stuff that's settled to the bottom after I've taken all the clear wine off the top. Uh, I'm just going to give you a bit of an idea of what it looks like and a bit of the colour uh, as we pour it into this uh, demijohn. Because we'll resettle that and see if we can claim uh, a couple of litres of, uh, of wine back. So you can see that uh, opaque, deep, dark purple colour and 
how solid it looks uh, by comparison to wine. Even on the back of that container, you can see it just uh, slowly making it its way down rather than just pouring out like a straight liquid. Um, so we'll continue to do this with all of our uh, our barrels, collect all that lees, resell it, get a couple of litres of good stuff and uh, go from there.